Right, so welcome to the first uh, lecture after the MIDS. Um, before the MIDS, we have been looking at one particular way of modeling and writing signal and response. Mm -hmm. And all of that was based on signs of mm -hmm. Right. So when we wrote the signal, how did we write it? What was on the x-axis? Always sign. Uh, for the system also, when we wrote it, uh, we wrote, let's say, the bulk response of a system H of N, that was also in what N? That is in sine. So we were saying how many responses was, uh, you are getting from the system. We even talked about time invariance of a system, right? Or time variance of a system. Uh, we covered that before the uh, mids. Now what we want to do is look at a completely different way of solving the same problem. Yeah. Why would that be helpful? Often, looking at a problem from a different angle okay, can give new insight. That's one way. Then, there are different kind of problems that, uh, let's say, one set of problems can be solved using one set of techniques more efficiently, and another set can be solved using another set of techniques. Even if both of them can be applied to the same problem, one may be more efficient. Yeah? So uh, you have looked at data compression, you have probably idea of it. Yeah? So in data compression, you are working with the same data, but what you do, you compress it and you make your problem simpler yeah? or computationally more manageable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, here, I will not fully go into this new domain, but today we start establishing the foundations of that domain. What is it there other than time? Okay. And we have already seen indications of that. Um, in time, one of the key features of signals was their periodicity, right? So being periodic or having some sort of repeatability in the signal is it has reasonable information right and that will be the key idea uh, i will come to that um, in great detail but what you have to keep in mind now is that we are switching domains now from time we had been working in time domain and we are switching to what we will now call frequency domain okay again Periodicity implies time period. Reciprocal of time period is what? Frequency. frequency. So it, it is when we say frequency, we could even say time period domain, for example. But that brings in time again. Time. So we, we just call it frequency domain. Uh, we will start the, let's say, the foundations of this field. Yeah? Frequency domain analysis without exaggeration is one of the things, or yeah, uh, one of the most important things in modern engineering. Okay, it has revolutionized the way we um, design systems, the way we implement them, the way we analyze them. Without frequency domain, if we had to stay within time domain, um, it is safe to say that um, our progress would have been delayed. So it's, it's a huge field uh, with huge applications and uh, with very, very deep uh, impact on almost all fields of engineering and also on physics and maths. When I have told you some of the topics here, I will relate them to what you have already done in your courses in differential equations. You have actually already used parts of frequency domain in solving differential equations without knowing it. Okay, so I will connect to that also very briefly. But for now, just keep in mind that uh, <coughs> this was here we had. This is before mid, right? Then the mid happened here. Yeah, uh, some crash <laughs> thing happened here, and then we are in the frequency domain. Right. 
Now, what the way I like to start it is by asking you a question about something you know very well, <coughs> which is linear algebra. Basic, aata hai? You know the basics of algebra, right? Um, in algebra two, abhi le rahe aapne? Yes, sir. Okay, and one you have already taken with differential yes. equations, yes? Okay, so then you should be able to tell me what is an eigenvector. <laughs> or do you want to take linear algebra 3 before you can answer that? First, it comes to the end. It starts with the end. So what is it? If I'm not mistaken, do we have this in FST high school? No, no. Where do we have this? Yes, it's in the basic method. Okay. It's been a long time, sorry to bother. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, anybody, what's an eigenvector? Lambda. Lambda. Okay, that's something. Kuch <laughs> yaad aya aap. Lambda. Is that an eigenvector, notation for eigenvector or something related to an eigenvector? Okay. Nahin, ye matrix ko scale karne ke liye istamal hoti. Matrix ko scale karne ke liye? Jee. Achcha. So, I'll take another marker. So, A ka kya ta hai aapne? Pahle formula ka bata dhe agar jaysa yaad me aada. What is an eigen? A minus lambda i equals? Determinant of A minus lambda. So, let's say you have A x, right? Is a matrix A being multiplied by a vector x right equals lambda x this is how you start defining eigenvector if a vector x satisfies this then you say x is an eigenvector of what matrix a yes and what is lambda then the eigenvalue yeah so, this is mathematical, yeah? just formula, the definition by formula. But what exactly is an eigenvector? Why do you study it again? What is it? Scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication, right? There is some indication in there. What is this equation really saying? If you interpret this equation, what is it saying? A is equal to lambda. Is it? <laughs> Let's say A is a million by million matrix. <laughs> is it equal to some constant? No, no. What's going on? What is this equation saying? See, here lies everything else. So, a certain type of A can be modeled by lambda. Not really, but okay, good try. <laughs> You are going to that A replaced by operation lambda. Is it? Yes. So, A is lambda or X is lambda? Yes. So, A is lambda. So, let's say A is a, like, it's a huge matrix. You know big data, you know big data and everything. It's a lot of names. It's written in every place. Big data. So let's say this is some data that R has collected, right? Um, about people clicking on different products, buying them or not buying them, clicking away, all that, yeah? Huge matrix. So million by million, thousand by thousand, huge matrix. A. And it was to be multiplied by some vector to get some operation, right? Some result. Now, if x happens to be an eigenvector of this matrix, what happens? It's saying, you don't need to do this matrix. Matrix multiplication, padhi aapne. Ye vector hai. Ye matrix hai, million by million ka. This is million by, one by million ka ho ga. Yes? How do you do matrix multiplication? With times x. Yeah? Plus, sorry. Then what you do? So the first row, First row into x, पूरा ये इससे multiply होगा, ये इससे होगा, ये इससे होगा, फिर सारे sum हो जाएंगे, 
ऐसे दूसरे में क्या आएगा दूसरा एलिमेंट क्या आएगा इसके सोल्यूशन का सेकेंड रो मल्टीप्लाइड बाय सिंग एलिमेंट वाई राइट दिस शुड रिमाइंड यू ऑफ व्हाट यू हैव डन ओवरलैपिंग एलिमेंट्स और वो सारा टेप मेथड में आपने कॉन्वोल्यूशन में थोड़ा बहुत आपने देखा है समझा सो इमेजिन डूइंग ऑल दीज मल्टीप्लीकेशन समेशन एंड डूइंग ऑल ऑफ दीज ऑल ऑफ दीज ऑल ऑफ दीज डूइंग ऑल ऑफ दैम या ह्यूज कॉम्पिटेशनल कॉस्ट राइट ठीक है कंप्यूटर फास्ट है आजकल लेकिन बार बार करना होगा तो इट्स गोइंग टू बी एड Now imagine what this equation is saying. <coughs> it's saying that if x happens to be an eigen vector of a, you don't need to do any of these. Just <coughs> ek multiplication kar lenge. Sirf ek. Kya? Wo kya hogi? Let's say if lambda is 10. So if x was whatever x ki values thi, har value ko kya kar dein? That's it. Scale kar dein bas. That's it. Chhota sa jawab isme ek कितना दे लोगे राइट इवन इफ एक्स इज वेरी लार्ज इट्स अ सिंपल स्केलिंग ऑपरेशन सो व्हाट दिस इक्वेशन इज एसेंशियली टेलिंग यू इज दैट इफ देयर एग्जिस्ट अ स्पेशल वेक्टर दैट वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू कॉल एन आइगन वेक्टर आइगन क्या होता है कैरेक्टरिस्टिक यस सो स्पेशल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक वेक्टर स्पेशल वेक्टर फॉर ए <coughs> क्या ये कोई एक यूनिक है क्या हर आप लोग डिफरेंट मेट्रिसेस यू वर गिवन इन लीनियर जेब्रा एंड यू वर आस्ड टू फाइंड आइगन वेक्टर्स ऑफ ईच सो इट सीम्स डिफरेंट मेट्रिसेस विल हैव डिफरेंट आइगन वेक्टर्स या बट व्हेन द आइगन वेक्टर्स एग्जिस्ट दे सैटिस्फाई दिस कंडीशन व्हिच इज नाउ लेट्स लुक एट इट इन अदर वे बेसिकली इट्स अ वेक्टर दैट गोस थ्रू दिस ऑपरेशन Let's look at it as ये जो ऑपरेशन है पूरा मैट्रिक्स ए का लेट्स लुक एट इट एज अ सिस्टम ओके दिस सिस्टम इज गोइंग टू ऑपरेट ऑन ए इनपुट वैक्टर राइट वेन दिस वैक्टर गोज थ्रू द सिस्टम नथिंग हैपन्स टू इट एक्सेप्ट फॉर स्केलिंग बस उसको और कोई फर्क ही नहीं पड़ता उससे x goes in, x comes out. Without it, ये चीज will not hold if x is not an eigen vector of a. So, for the large variety of vectors, this thing will not hold. But for eigen vector, the beauty here is that it went through this huge matrix operation, which we can call a system. Remember, I mentioned at the start, a system is a filter, is an operation, is a physical thing. It can be uh, lots of things. so it goes through unchanged except for the scale right so for the scaling kya hoti hai eigen values right that is why um you are often taught uh, about eigen functions and so sorry eigen values and eigen vectors now how do we use this ye to bhi maine aapko iski ek interpretation batayi right from now on don't see eigen values and eigen vectors as a x equal lambda x ya jaise aap kehte hain a minus i lambda i sin x equal 0 right <coughs> that is just an equation from now on you should see x as what as a very special vector for a that goes through a unaffected except for scaling and that scaling is eigen value तो एक ही जुमले में आपके आइगन वेक्टर और आइगन वैल्यू दोनों का मीनिंग आपको क्लियर हो गया हाउ डज दिस हेल्प अस इन जनरल आपने आइगन वैल्यू डिकम्पोजिशन की है लेट्स सी Let's say there is a matrix A, and you know that it has two eigenvectors x1, 
which comes out lambda 1 x1 and it has another eigenvector x2 which comes out lambda 2 x2. Notice that different eigenvectors will have different or they will be the same but in general they will have their own scaling. Right? But yeah. Yeah? Okay. Now let's say A has these two eigenvectors. Hmm? And <clears throat> there are some further conditions on um, orthonormal basis, but let's let's look at this first. Let's say now that you want to pass a vector y through this matrix. And y is not an eigenvector of A. Okay? If it's eigenvector, we would say it's lambda 3 y or there. Simple scaling. Now, we want to talk about any general vector which is going through the matrix A. <coughs> now, if A is million by million or something, what do you have to do? Multiplication? Multiplication. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> basis? Do you have to basis? Yes, yes. yes. What is basis? Basic vector. Unit vectors of the end of span cut yeah, span trade cut. Hmm. Unit to nay like in half span cut now so span matlab mean space may of course linear combinations hmm. and you can create that matrix. Hmm. Right? Um, so let's say I can use these eigenvectors. I know the exist vectors of A. I can use them to write y, okay? So let's say I write y as a1 x1 plus a2 x2. What, I, what have I done? I have rewritten y as a linear combination <coughs> of the eigenvectors of <coughs> a. Agar, let's say you have done this somehow. I the eigenvalues vectors pata the, and I was able to rewrite this like this. I'm treating the x1 and x2 as, oh, sorry, this is <coughs> x1 and x2 as the basis function, right? So, now can you tell me what's the answer? As it does, right? Even if A is million by million, right? What's the answer? <coughs> Start with this one. A1 X1 yes, goes through A. X1 happens to be an eigenvector of A. So it will come out unchanged except for A scaling. Right? So it will come out. And of course you provided this, so this will also go through. What about the second term? A2 lambda 2 x2. Okay. Just by rewriting a general vector as a linear combination of eigenvectors, you are able to take benefit of this thing where you don't <coughs> actually have to do all of this. This is extreme compression, right, in operations. Right? For a given matrix, you only have to find the eigenvectors once. Then any given vector. Now I change this to <coughs> another vector v. Then you will have v1 x1 plus v2 x2. Right? <coughs> so again, you can find this answer. If z is multiplied by a, mm -hmm. what do you get? You can immediately see it. Right? <coughs> So, what's the takeaway here? One, these matrices can have characteristic vectors which pass through the matrices unchanged except for scaling. Such vectors are eigenvectors and the scalings are eigenvalues. That's one thing. Second, in most cases, we are able to write some other conditions on the basis. But in most, just to simplify things for now, 
we can write <coughs> vectors that are not eigenvectors of a given matrix in terms of linear combinations of eigenvectors. Once we write them, this operation, this kind of operation becomes simple. Now, see, you have a matrix multiplication bhi kar rahe hote is waqt. System ko chhod. A y ko dekhi kya hai. This will be a times a one x one, right? Plus a times a t x t. Constant hai, wo bahar a jayega. A x one plus a t a x t. But we already know x one happens to be an eigenvector of a, so it will pass through a, becoming just lambda one x one. That's what you told me, right? A one lambda one x one. A to lambda x. <coughs> so this was the second takeaway that any general vector or input, once rewritten as a linear combination of eigenvectors, mm -hmm. becomes very simple to work with. Okay. So how does this relate to what we have been covering? Yeah. Now. <coughs> When we were answering this question, how to um, write the output of an arbitrary input given to an any system, right? We restricted ourselves to a special class of systems. What was that? LTI. LTI, right? So now, what I'm going to do this course is not about this thing. Yeah, we did a quick seek revision to connect. What this course is about is replacing here, instead of this, we have systems, and those systems in this course are LTI systems. Hmm? So, now what we want to do is replace this by <coughs> LTI systems. Now, just like vectors, uh, sorry, matrices have eigenvectors, <coughs> systems can have eigenfunctions. Eigenfunctions are basically just another name for vectors or say um, uh, processes that pass through the LTI system unchanged. Okay, so just like an eigenvector passes through a matrix unchanged, similarly, LTI systems can have functions that pass through them unchanged. So, what does that mean? So let, okay, let's say if there is an LTI system <coughs> and x t let's say happens to be an eigenfunction of this system, so you know what you will get in output? Simple scaling times x t. Okay. So in when we go from matrices to systems, we talk about instead of eigenvectors, we talk about eigen functions. Now, what are the eigenfunctions of LTI systems? Yeah. So you haven't covered that before and that's where a uh, lot of frequency domain work starts. Um, to simplify things, I'll tell you this. Sinusoids, and particularly complex sinusoids. What is sinusoid? are the eigenfunctions of LTI systems. Okay. So what does that mean? That means <coughs> if you know the system is LTI, okay, and you send in a sinusoid, a sine wave or a cosine wave, which is just sine shifted by space, yeah? So you know what you will get in the output? Again, this sine wave, okay? The only thing that may have changed is the scaling or the phase. Otherwise, it has the same frequency, okay, and it is your sinusoid again. So sinusoids are basically eigenfunctions of LTI systems, okay. Later, I will maybe prove some parts of it. It's, it's not too hard to show. Actually, from a distance, say, we can show, okay, they, they just come out and we just scale it. But what you need to keep in mind now is, just like we had eigenvectors for matrices, we have eigenfunctions for LTI systems. What are the eigenfunctions of LTI systems? 
sinusoids, complex sinusoids, complex exponentials, which are more generic versions. Okay, so for now we will uh, stick to let's say complex sinusoids. So how does that help us? <coughs> let's see. So as I said, complex exponentials and particularly complex sinusoids are the eigenfunctions of LPI system. So let's write that in a more general way and then connect to what we have already discussed. If this is an LPI system, okay, and the input happens to be a complex sinusoid, is P type of Yaga, complex sinusoid, yeah. P J omega n, then the output is again P J omega n. आप ने इसकी इंडिकेशन देखी हैं इंटेग्रल ऑफ द एक्सपोनेंशियल फंक्शन क्या होता है सो इंटेग्रल इज एन एलपीआर ऑपरेशन आप चेक कर सकते हैं राइट सो यू ऑलरेडी हैव सीन इंटेग्रल ऑफ अ कोसाइन क्या होता है साइनस क्या हुआ साइनोसॉइड वेंट इन साइनोसॉइड ऑफ द सेम फ्रीक्वेंसी केम आउट राइट एक्सेप्ट विद अ फेज शिफ्ट राइट सो फेज शिफ्ट इज पॉसिबल एम्पलीट्यूड चेंज इज पॉसिबल so in this case <coughs> let's say both of those the phase shift and the amplitude change is embodied in one complex multiplier right and we will call that multiplier we can call it at omega okay so this now plays the role of what eigen vector ki values mein kya chahiye eigen yeah eigen value ka role play kar raha hai yahan pe वहां पे हमारे पास वी वर कॉलिंग देम लैम्डा वन लैम्डा टू दैट्स नॉट एफिशिएंट टू हैव वन टू राइट सो वी रिप्लेस दैट बाय द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द साइनोसॉइड राइट सो नाउ लेट्स सी दिस इज द स्केलिंग सो व्हाट इज इट सेइंग इट इज अगेन जस्ट लाइक व्हेन यू सॉ इन केस ऑफ आइगन वैल्यूज एंड आइगन वेक्टर्स फॉर एलपीआई सिस्टम इफ यू सेंड इन अ साइनोसॉइड यू गेट आउट that sinusoid frequency change here is p okay the only changes there are in amplitude and phase okay ye <coughs> complex value hai agar ye ho alpha p minus 10 ho let's say right so then you will have this thing what the whole thing is alpha p j omega n minus 10 ye phase shift ho gaya ye amplitude mein variation aa gayi par sinusoid wahi ka wahi so that's why what i mean by a complex scaling okay eigen values bhi complex ho sakti hai wo ye baat wo aur kya okay so <coughs> what what have we learned from here so far let's see what we can do uh, with this in case of finding the output of lpi systems right so let's see Firstly, as I mentioned, sinusoids are the what are they? They are eigen functions of LPI system, right? Now, as we did in case of vectors, we wrote a general vector as linear combination of the eigen vectors, and then passed it through the system. Yeah. Now, in this case, let's see. If I want to pass a signal x n through an LPI system, and I want to get the output, yeah, in the time domain we have already answered this question, right? What was it? Y n was what? X n. What was it? H n, where H n was the impulse response, so that represented the time domain version of the LPI. system right we have already answered this question now let me show you another way without the convolute okay jis tarah isme tha ek tarika ye hai without 
decomposing it you do this which would entail multiplying each vector so here by 15 getting the answer then multiplying 15 multiply the overlaps we a tape method each other in a way convolution each other in a way yeah so that was one way the other way we said why not do it smartly rewrite y like this and then the answer becomes very obvious which was a lambda 1 x1 plus b lambda 2 x2 now same thing is going to happen here so far we have been doing this thing but it's really convolution if you had x are like that right? now imagine making it simpler okay without going into detail let's say that i can write xn as a linear combination of the eigenfunctions of lti system what are the eigenfunctions of lti system sinusoids right so keep it general we use complex sinusoids that's it what if i can write my given input as a linear combination of two complex sinusoids okay so complex sinusoids are the uh, eigenfunctions when a j omega 1 n goes through this system what comes out e j omega 1 n right but multiplied by a eigenvalue which is h omega 1 right when e j omega 2 n goes through this LTI system what you get in the output is again e j omega 2 n but now the scaling is different because it's a different eigen function yeah similarly now imagine that we have written our input as a linear combination of the eigen functions as a linear combination so we'll examine. Yeah. Now tell me what's the answer. So h1 omega, e j omega. <coughs> so yn will be a a right plus b h omega 2 e j omega 2 n right convolution just like it happened in the case of the matrices same thing has happened here therein lies the real power of the frequency domain okay or the five may interpretation ke understand wo hum aayenge jab poser pe aayenge hum karenge lekin this is the crux of the whole idea okay so Iske elements kya hai? How, how can we use this technique? If I want to summarize it, how can we use this technique? So, <clears throat> let's see how much time we have. I'll just quickly mention the elements and then we can um, maybe continue in the next lecture. So, let me summarize the elements of using this technique. Yeah. First, if you want to do this, you have to identify what are the basis functions or vectors. Okay. Why in this case we are using the eigen function? In case of A, you are always finding the eigenvector. For LTI, we already know now. Because we know that sinusoids are the eigenfunctions of any LTI system. All you have to do is identify a system as an LTI system and you have its basis. They are the eigen, uh, they are the complex sinusoids. That can vary. It could be that you need a j omega 1 n plus j omega 2 n plus c j omega 3 n. So, j omega 1 2 ka apasna relation kya hoga? Ye bhi thoda sa ek relation hoi cheez hai. But essentially this is what's gonna happen. Yeah? So, 
you have to identify what are the basis functions or the eigen functions second what are the weights a b yeah ye when you decompose a signal as a linear combination then you have to find a b kisi cheez kya chahiye to solve this whole thing when it passes through kya tha answer mein <coughs> eigen values wahan aap lambda 1 lambda 2 kehte hain linear algebra here we call them h omega right so what are the eigen values if you can do all these three of these you can make use of this technique okay now you have heard of uh, fourier transform yes right you have heard of z transform maybe mm -hmm. laplace yes yes geber no wavelet no no okay the powerful thing is all of them work on this principle what do they play with them change is kind you know what they change <coughs> basis functions go abhi main aapko complex sinusoid discrete time mein if i use them i'm working with z transform if i use complex sinusoid in continuous time then i am either using laplace or fourier what's the difference wo phir main aapko aage aur bataunga wavelet mein instead of using pure sinusoid you use chirps like this okay so you change these basis functions and you get different kinds of transform par un sab ke piche story ek hi hai so if you can grasp this concept and then uh, learn to use it you have actually gotten most of the idea about uh, or let's say motivation for the frequency or the transform domain okay transform kaha ho raha hai basically this, this is one way of looking at the transform a system a signal or a process has been rewritten as a linear combination of special functions special kaun se hain which are eigen functions varna koi fayda nahi hai wo dobara manipulation karni padegi right right <coughs> so let's see um in this case what are the uh, in case of lti system as i have already mentioned these are the eigen functions and let's answer each of these very quickly and then we are done for the day and we'll come back to what we are going to work on in the next lectures which is the z transform okay z transform is a transform we use in discrete time signals it's not the only one there are many other but this is one of the uh, key concepts um and let me tell you this what we learn in z transform okay in this course you have three transforms z laplace or fourier sometimes student complain that the material of this course is very expensive but really if you understand what i'm going to tell you in the next two or three lectures about z transform how to inverse transform all the properties of the transform how to use them if you understand practice them well the exact same sorry exact same understanding can be easily extended to fourier and laplace so they just become a repetition even the partial fraction ex uh, extension aap use karenge for the inverse z transform wohi use hogi hai laplace mein bhi aur fourier mein bhi tables are very similar okay so conceptually they are very similar so agle do teen lecture if you get them properly grasp the z transform doesn't have to be z actually if you grasp the laplace transform you got z and fourier no problem if you grasp fourier you got the other two in this case i like to start with z transform because it's in the discrete time and instead of integrals it has 
summations which you guys don't get scared by <laughs> compared to integral so that's why i start with z transform and for our case our answers to these are going to be this firstly the eigen functions we are going to use are uh, which we say are the we will write them as um, z n these are the eigen functions we are going to use where what is z basically z is any complex sinusoid say e j phi and for simplicity we often uh, take this um, to be just one value and we set a to be uh, one so we take let's say we start with this we're not restricted to that but we can start with that okay so z is our basis functions that we are going to use and what is z in this case it's a e j phi of this complex sinusoid what are the weights okay so how do we <coughs> find the weights remember we wanted to write xn say here xn as a c j omega 1n plus b e j omega 2n right so this is let's say z1 this is z2 for example now how do we find a and b that is the second question we have to find the weights so without going into full proof of this i can tell you that one way to find the weights is to project your signal xn onto the basis vectors projection padhi aap फॉर नाउ What I want you to see is get the bigger picture first. Okay? Details में हम जाएंगे आप थोड़ा सा परेशान में शुरू हो जाएंगे. Book में है. We can look at them. But for now, what I want you to focus on is this key formula thing. Yeah, this key approach. Set your basis functions. Okay, it's going to be complex sinusoid. We are going to call them for the discrete time. We are going to call them z and what are the weights how do we find them there is a shortcut this is it and actually this shortcut has a name kya naam hai sir koi guess kar sakte so the transform is nothing except finding the weights kuch bhi nahi hai okay so this has a name what about the eigen values what are the <coughs> eigen values so uska bhi main aapko abhi short sa bata deta hu filhal in fact for this problem the eigen values are the z transform of the impulses so if you write h z if you have impulse response in time domain yeah and you want to take its z transform kya hoga formula hai aapko already bata diya hua yeah so it will be h n z minus n right so the eigen values are the z transform of the impulse response so for a discrete time system you have basically answer to all three of these okay what's going on basically let's see you have basis function or the eigen functions complex sinusoid the weights can be found by using a projection that projection we will call z transform mm -hmm. and uh, the eigen values are actually just the z transform of the impulse response yeah ab isko aap quick side action mein agar dekhna chahte ho this is what's happening <coughs>
let's start with the time domain. You had an LTI system, and we said that you don't need to know the full system. If it's LTI, you only need to know its bulk response. Then you know its output. What is it? Xn is always Hn. Right? Now, <coughs> let's say I have replaced this by these xz, these weights, and this hz, the z transform of the bulk response. Then the output in the z domain is, you know what it is? xz times hz. Next time I'll prove this formula. Okay, today I'm skipping the details. What I want you to see is the beauty of the ax equal lambda x happening here also. Okay. multiplications, row, column, row, column, shift, ugly row may join, column, row, column. That's what this guy was gonna do. Right? Instead of that, you ended up doing just this thing. Simple plotter. Right? What happened? This is time domain. This is frequency domain, basically the Z domain. The frequency domain kai hai, Laplace hai, Fourier hai, so sometimes we call it just frequency or we call Z transform domain. So, this is the time domain, mushkil kaam hai. Yeah. Frequency domain, convolution is simply replaced by a product. Product kis ke saath ho raha hai, kis ke saath ho raha tha? Eigen value ke saath. Achha, ab this was an eigenvector, but if y was not an eigenvector, could we still do this? Yes, we could. We could write y as a x1 plus b x2. Let's say this is row eigenvectors. Okay. Then we could write it like this. And then what would a y be? Instead of doing the whole product, you would get a lambda 1 x1 plus b lambda 2 x2. Right? This is what you would do. Basically, simple product of this thing. <coughs> so, here also you are doing a simple gay reaki eigen values or gay reaki weights. Okay. So, this has given you the weights of the output. Gay aapko output nahi de raha hai, frequency domain hai. Right? It is giving you the weights of the output. So how do you get the output then? Inverse Z transform. Right? So wo aap <coughs> aage right? If you write this directly, then you can get um, in the frequency domain in the time domain. But we will see that later. Okay. So <coughs> I think with that we can uh, end today's lecture. I will take questions. Maybe we don't need to record that. Uh, let's see.